Hello, and welcome to Ingenium Ignis. In the last videos, we worked on this beautiful prompt using Oh My Posh. As you can see here, we uh, can display um, the username with a user uh, icon, the host name, the path to our current working directory, where the last three folders are shown, and the rest of the path is hidden in the form of this uh, dot dot element, like an ellipsis. And also as well here, <clears throat> the branch that we are in Git, in the, in the local repository. Uh, here at the start, we have 11. That's the subscriber account for my YouTube channel, for Ingenio Ignis. And we are in the middle of developing the software that is responsible for getting this subscriber account. For now, it's uh, a bit slow, but I hope to get it uh, to be faster in the next videos. Today, I want to concentrate though on one point, and it is the use of alternative rules for StyleCop Analyzer. So let's get Rider open. And I hope I can show you what I mean. So um, one thing is, in the last video, I think, I've um, installed StyleCop analyzers to our YouTube CLI project. And I have commented some things about it. So one thing I have uh, commented about it was about the use of underscore to with um, private field. I said I didn't like it because I was used to use StyleCop and StyleCop um, wouldn't allow it. But in the meantime, I've discovered that there is a way to configure the rules of StyleCop. And that made me really happy. This means that I can start using this convention of putting underscores at the beginning of um, a private field. So how this works. So uh, first, let me show you uh, an example. I think here in get subscriber account, I can actually see already a private field that I had here and I didn't use underscore because uh, um, if I try to use underscore here, for example, then we will get a warning, uh, not only a warning, but a lot of errors. <laughs> But the one is uh, field YouTube service should not begin with an underscore. That's coming from StyleCop. If I took the underscore away, you see exactly the opposite. Name YouTube service does not match rule instance fields private. Yes, name is underscore YouTube service. Why is it? Because uh, this is because Rider is having a conflict with um, StyleCop. So Ryder wants to rename it to underscore YouTube service and StarCop is saying no, uh, no underscore allowed. So um, to change this behavior of StarCop, we need to add, I think, a configuration file. I've made some notes on how to do this so that I don't waste a lot of time uh, researching for it. And let's see here. So, rule sets in a writer for style cop analyzers. You can change the behavior of the rules of style cop analyzer using a rule set file. So, that's the file we need, the rule set file. And this file has an extension rule set and is added to the specific project. It also must be referenced in the CVS project file in a property group using the property code anal analy analysis rule set. Okay, so one step at a time. Let me add the rule set to our project. So I think I just need a right click here in the project and add file. And now we just add style cop dot rule set. Okay. Yeah, I want to add it to git. Great. Now, let's save it without writing anything. 
Okay, so that's now here. And what I want is to go to my YouTube CLI.cs proj. I think I can open this here in edit, edit YouTube CLI CS proj, exactly. And now I need to add to the property group a new property. And this property, it's called, I think it's code analysis. Yeah. Code analysis rule set, this one. And then we say style cop. dot rule set so okay now we referenced the file and we need to go to the writer preferences which are settings here and in the preferences we go to editor inspection settings uh, here so here somewhere, we will find the read settings from editor config, project settings and rule set. And as you see, it's already marked here. So the checkbox is checked. So that's done. And now let's go to our rule set and start working on it. So style cop rule set. This, the rule set is written in XML. And that's why we need this XML header at the start. Okay. So uh, let's copy this here. And now we start writing rule set. Yes. Yes. And we give a name to it. Style cop rules. And the two version, I have no idea where I have this from, but I know that 15.0 works. So that was the row set. And inside of the row set, we can have the element rules. Okay. And for this, we will need the analyze ID and the namespace. So I'll just copy this, okay, because um, it's easier. So for stylecop, we have uh, stylecop dot analyzers twice. That's it. Yes. Inside the rules, you can then write the individual rules and um, with an ID and an action. And with the action, you can control what is the um, warning level for that specific rule? So uh, what I saw is that StyleCop has three alternative rules. As I can show you, if we go to Firefox and go to the StyleCop repo. So StyleCop. Here, yeah. all right. Uh, then if you go to documentation and to alternative rules, you'll find three of them. First, do not prefix local members with this. Second, field names must begin with underscore. And third, static field names must begin with underscore. I want these three rules. And as you see here, these alternative rules have an SX at the beginning, and the rules that they substitute have an SA, I think. So what I've done here in my notation is I set the rule, um, the action of the rule with ID SX1101 to warning, while setting the action of the original rule to none. And I did this for the three different rules, okay? So I will copy this and paste it here. And now 
what I hope to see is for our warning to disappear. If I put in, if I rename it to use a, a underscore, the warning should disappear. So let's rename it with underscore. Um, and as you see, this was a massive uh, fail. So I don't know what went wrong. Let me see. <laughs> let's build it again. So here it's clear to me that the style couple understood what I meant because we are not seeing and the same problem again. But Ryder still didn't understand. I uh, let me go there again and try to unmark it and mark it again. Maybe so. Read settings. This save and go there again. And mark it again, save, and let's see. Um, okay, now it works. So, I don't know, was this the case, or I just needed to close the get subscriber account? I don't know, but um, you see here that this is marked uh, with a warning, but the underscore isn't marked anymore uh, as a warning. So. Uh, we successfully changed the way Rider recognized the rules of StyleCop um, Analyzer. So let's just correct these things. So remove rather than disqualifier, and we want to do this for the whole solution. Nice. And now there are also warnings here. I think the problem is because I need the uh, full name qualifier here, maybe. Okay, so this is, this is now good. Okay, let me save this. And um, let me go to the other parts of the project. Uh, there is a, a one in here again because uh, the full qualifier is not there anymore. Comments, okay. And here, this is a warning. Yeah, no. But here, there is a warning again. So let's rename it in solution. Okay. Next. So this now isn't a problem anymore. And let me take this, remove this, this prefix here. Okay, no warnings anymore. And here, the same. Just remove this, this prefix. So now I think the code um, is more in line with modern conventions. Um, the last thing I want to do is to get rid of this suppress message thing. Because now that we have control of the style cop rules, then we can just disable the SR1600 rule going to the style cop rule set and writing here a new entry. So we just say, okay, rule. If I DSA1600, and we want an action of none. So this way, we won't be forced to uh, document the um, elements of our types. So if I get rid of this suppress message now, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so you see no warnings. And now I can do this for the whole thing. Uh, and I can get rid of this using statement as well. I think us here as well. So don't need this using statement, don't need to suppress the uh, warning. Uh, I hope I don't need this one here. What is was this one for?
Oh, I see. This one is because I've allowed XML documentation and then um, this is a dot .NET warning. Uh, to get rid of this one, I need to go here to my project properties. And I think somewhere maybe in here where I build. Yes, and do not generate XML documentation. And if I mark this this way, then this is also gone. So, okay, gone, gone, gone. Um, where else? I've changed this here. Uh, I can I can't take this program away. I've changed this here in program. Now I can change this in type hagestra. Bang, nice. I can take the suppress message away and the using statement as well. And last but not least, this file here, the type resolver. So pragma go away, using diagnostics code analyzer go away and suppress message go away. So that's nice. And I think this deserves a commit. So let's commit it. Changed. Uh, rule configuration for style cop analyzers. Change rules. Uh, so, change rules configuration for style cop analyzers. I think this is right. So, so okay. Uh, and commit. So, everything is committed. And I think that's it for today. Uh, I just wanted to change the rule set and we did it uh, successfully. The, there is, I think if I compile it, no warnings anymore. Okay, um, okay. I have a build warning. <laughs> um, but I can't find a way to, let me open the log file. Yes, that's a style cop rule as well. So we want to get rid of it as well. So that's the style cop rule number one. <laughs> uh, good that we learn how to, to get rid of it. So number one, gone. Now let me build again. And after it builds without warnings, I can amend the commit. Yep, amend it. Yep, pretty much amend commit. Uh, Sorry, let me mark this and then amend. Yeah, amend commit. Nice. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I will get to do videos more often. I hope this was helpful. Never forget, ignite your brain and see you on the next video. Bye.